This has been a long time coming, finally giving you my labor and delivery story. I mean, it's like really been a long time coming. And if you're interested in hearing more about what's gone on since I posted my last video, I hope you'll check out my channel. And of course, be sure to subscribe. But I will warn you, um, you know, what happened Wonderful, beautiful baby Anastasia was born, super healthy. So in that sense, we had a very healthy and beautiful delivery. Um, but I will tell you, there were a lot of twists and turns, a lot of things I didn't expect, many things I'd never even heard of before. And I'm like a YouTuber that actually like watches other people's labor and deliveries. So because of that, I've just decided I'm gonna dish. like. And the truth is I'm gonna dish in a way that maybe some people aren't gonna to wanna to watch. So if you aren't interested in hearing some of the like gory, even bloody details, I hate to say this, of some things like don't watch, it's, it's okay. I know a lot of you like are researchers like me and you like to hear all the things. And um, I will tell you no matter what, it's a beautiful, awesome testimony that like God is faithful even when this stuff happens and like he can give us the strength and mama bear always comes out always and it will in you too okay so let's start i'm almost two weeks late and in the middle of the night i wake up because i feel a little bit of leaking check in the bathroom i literally have like three or four spots that look like i may have leaked and honestly i thought oh i probably just peed myself classic right i'd heard people say this before so i went back to bed or tried to on and off when i woke up the next morning and i lifted myself out of bed it happened again checked again just a couple of spots but i really justified that it must have been me just like peeing myself right like the action of me lifting like made that happen so i didn't do anything about it let the day progress it happened one more time kind of mid-morning almost lunch time and that time again just a couple spots so finally like right about five o'clock hits and it's happened one more time and I remembered telling Eric, okay, it's happened four times now. Um, I, I don't think I'm being myself, most likely. I'm like leaking something. So I probably should call, um, you know, my doctor before she leaves the office. So ring, ring. She calls me back immediately after I left her a voicemail. And I kid you not, like a, I kid you not, she was upset with me. I don't know if you've ever had like a medical professional get like a little bit frustrated or disappointed with you, but it is a very strange experience, especially when you know like you are the one to blame. Um, so in my arrogance and thinking that I knew what was better for myself, right? Um, she is frustrated because she is verifying that most likely I am leaking some fluid. But the problem is, is that if I had called her any time earlier that day, I could have gone into her office, she would have checked me and then sent me home. And then she and I just would have stayed in communication, right? But instead her office had closed, therefore I was required to go to the hospital. I mean, she was like the kind of frustration where she would pause just to like clearly work through her wording. And she just said like, why didn't you reach out to me? Like I, we have to know if this is um, amniotic fluid. Like, I, I need you to go in to get checked out. And this is the only way that you can. You have to go to the hospital. And she was like, we just built this whole thing all year long, this relationship, right, where she was trying to help me to not get, like, stuck in a hospital, which is what happened to me before. And she's like, your first action right now is I'm sending you to a hospital, and if you are leaking any kind of fluid, they will, like, actually admit you, require you to be admitted, and they'll start the timer. She said, it's not my timer. The hospital will start that timer. So she was frustrated at me, but you know, like we moved on and she's like, pack up your bags you need to, or pack up your stuff you need to go into the hospital and get checked out. So I get off the phone, I'm crying for sure. And so I make the bold decision, I'm gonna say bold, and it was a bold decision, to try the elusive midwives brew. And when I say midwives brew, I mean the actual concoction. So I'm not gonna talk about it right now. You can go look it up. Some people use different variations of it. I use like the legit original one with castor oil. And the reason being is that I had no contractions, like nothing. It was just dead down there, like peaceful state. 
So my sister is in town from Pennsylvania. So she runs out to the store, she grabs all this stuff. I put everything together. We make all the arrangements. I'm running out the door. I chug it. Dis bleh, like so disgusting, <laughs> so disgusting. But I was really determined because I really did not want to sit in a hospital for 24 hours without any contractions because I was barely leaking fluid and then and endure this like battle again of what do we do? So I chugged the midwife's brew. We're 15 minutes from the hospital. We get into the hospital. We get up to the room. I am sitting there. And at this point, I have now finally started to have a couple of very, very mild, very distant contractions. And someone comes in to the triage. She makes a couple comments. I'm like, I mean, like, maybe I'm having contractions, like, here and there. She leaves. And within a minute, they hit. So I'm starting to go through these contractions. It's really intense. So this was the first thing that happened that was a little strange is that the midwives brew actually did, did work for me and I used it and there were repercussions and you should be warned. There were repercussions. So I start to have these contractions and they were really quite intense for them just hitting right then. Uh, so I pop on my headphones. I begin going through my um, labor and delivery meditation, which is still to this day really sweet and really valuable to me. I recommend you watch it. I'll make sure to have the link um, for you to uh, go check it out if it interests you. So I'm going through that and it was wonderful. It was the first time I was really able to experience what it was like to like feel the oncoming intensity of a contraction and to breathe through it to calm down using some hypnosis techniques that I had um, like practice and feel my body relax in the middle of a contraction. Whoa, so amazing. Okay, so that begins to progress. Now let's talk about what was happening with my body and triage. So they were trying to check me. Second or third strange thing that happened to me um, was that I started bleeding a lot. Um, so much so that they couldn't check me. They had like two or three different nurses do it. Then they called down to some medical student who came up and had never done this before and was a little bit weirded out by the whole thing. And it was strange. And he was like digging around in there and ultimately was like, I like, I, uh, I have no idea. She's just bleeding so much. I don't know how to tell. They tried to do a test. And, um, by the time the nurse came back in, I was in such intense contractions. She's like, listen, we're just going to call it, okay, that you're in labor. You clearly are like every two and a half, three minutes apart. It's very intense and you seem like you're leaking fluid. So let's just admit you. So on my way to the room that I'll actually be like delivering in, the contractions get real, real intense, which I've heard is a challenge that when you're focusing on using techniques like hypnobirthing and... Um, any other breathing techniques that when you're in that transition, like moving from a room or doing something else and you get kind of distracted, that it can really throw you off your game. And this absolutely happened to me, I'm gonna be honest. By the time I got to the room, I was like, okay, no, I just want pain meds. And at this point I was still only at four centimeters. Um, and I was just like, I just don't, I don't know how to keep doing this. I'm two minutes apart. They're intense, like really intense. There was no buildup. I went within like 20 minutes from zero to like 80 or 90. And I was just terrified of what was going to come. So, um, you know, I had to like really go through this like checklist of things with my husband because I was trying to avoid the pain medicine so much that I was like, now you have to say this and you have to do this. And then I have to come back with this. So we finally got to the point where I'm literally like grabbing him by the shirt. Like, I don't care what I ever said before. <laughs> like, I want the medicine now. Give me the drugs. So that happened, right? So... The beautiful thing was that something cool happens in that moment. And I know there's really cool things that happen from just enduring through that pain, but feeling that like rest and knowing that I was laboring in a way that was going to bring about my baby without having to go, you know, um, without having to induce or hopefully go to a C-section was just really sweet for me. And I got to experience it and remember it, be present for that moment. So the next strange thing that happened was, um, I mean, it was kind of cool, actually. So, you know, again, doctor, not so happy with me, but I was basically her whole evening. So she came to the hospital and she stayed at the hospital until we delivered. And then she had to leave and I found out had another patient that was laboring at another hospital that she missed through the whole labor part. So I really was grateful for that. To me, that was a really special experience because that just doesn't happen, I know, with a lot of doctors. So she was in and out of my room 
constantly. She probably sat in my room at least for one hour at one point. Um, but there was kind of a unique reason why. I was doing a VBAC, as many of you probably know. And um, baby was struggling a little bit. Her heart rate was irregular. You know, they give me these names of like what was happening right with her heart rate. But at some point, um, it got so intense. They're trying to like keep the monitor on me somewhere, but she was really not doing well. And then her, how her body was positioned, they were like, we're going to have to place an internal monitor. Okay. That just means that they take this little, like almost a sticky thing, just like you would, I don't know, some sort of sticky monitor. Right. And they stick it up there and they put it on her physically. They like strap it on to baby so that they can hear her heart rate better. Well, it wasn't working. Like it wasn't staying stable or something. So my friends, for over an hour, the most wonderful, sweet nurse in the world had her hands up my canal, <laughs> holding this little thing in place for like an hour, legitimately. I had a hand in there for like an hour. And she was so amazing, like so amazing. You could tell she she was expressing, she was like, this is like the biggest workout that I've done in a long time. Um, and I mean, she would have to switch out hands because she was getting so tired. And like how I was positioned, she was like down low here, like trying to figure this, I mean, it was like a wild thing. Um, I could not believe that was happening to me at all. Um, so yes, another really strange thing. But at this point, things start, her heartbeat's doing okay. You know, they're just watching. They're a little nervous that we're going to end up having to, you know, do a C-section. My doctor later told me, like, she was like five, ten minutes. She felt like from having to make that decision to, like, call us to a C-section just because of how, like, difficult things were, seemed to be with baby, um, and her stability. So thank the Lord, that didn't happen. And, you know, all those feelings came. I'm like, hey, I'm ready to push. At this point, it seemed like very typical experience. It aligned so much with others' experiences. Prop these legs out. I really tried to work on them, like getting me upright because I wanted, you know, gravity to kind of take us down. Um, but uh, she did have some restrictions on that, which I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, so, you know, my sister's there, my hubby's there, pushing back my legs, rooting me on. And it was about a 15 minute like time frame of me pushing and baby coming out. I have zero memory of pain. I can remember that I felt tugging, right? What a lot of other people say, um, but out sweet little thing came. So it was like beautiful, right? I had a C-section with my first and now she is delivered and we pulled her right up onto my chest. And I, she nursed immediately. Oh my goodness, how, oh, this was so beautiful. Cause I really struggled with nursing with my first. So this just like, I mean, tears, it was a really beautiful moment, right? When she's finally coming up onto my chest, she began to nurse very shortly after. It was beautiful. Um, yeah, that's the highlight. It's all these weird things that happen ahead of that time. Like, it took me a while to go back and remember them or even kind of recall what had happened prior to her being born because this was so beautiful, so significant, and it just doesn't matter. <laughs> At least it didn't for me for a while, you know, just once I got to meet her. Um, so there's still a couple of weird turns at this point. You know, I'm, she's perfectly healthy. So amazing. Um, so I'm holding her, you know, and you know, nurse is just hanging out, you know, down yonder. Um, so then time's going on and, you know, we're up to, I think like 45 minutes and, uh, not nurse, sorry. Um, the doctor. And at one point she's like asking for more supplies. Um, I don't really fully understand what's happening. I'm kind of in a euphoric state. And then um, someone's telling me that like she's been sewing me up. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So I got the tear and I was like, oh, well, I'm kind of glad I had the epidural then, right? Um, you know, but she's like there for a long time. I think her total was like 52 minutes or something that she was there afterwards. And she like, and I was like, what are you still doing here? You have another like patient that's like laboring right now. Right. Um, it's funny that I would even question like, what are you doing here? Like you're just hanging out. No, she was not just hanging out. Um, she was really trying to fix my body. Here's my warning to you about the midwife's brew. It really loosened like everything up, everything. So I had, you know, you know, relieved myself, like, you know, a lot, a lot throughout apparently 
the whole time, even while I wasn't laboring, like, I mean, like, actually, like, pushing, it, things were, and nurses were very secretly kind of wiping it up and taking it away. And turns out that's, like, an actual art form. I think that they practice this, labor and delivery nurses. It's a thing that they, like, try their best to kind of, like, sweep it under the rug or to distract you or not to let you know that it's happening, especially when you have the epidural. You don't even feel it down there. And then I had the midwife's brew that was really pushing things out. Yeah, so things were a disgusting mess. So she is completely done now. Everything's been cleaned up. Baby's over there getting, like, wiped down a little bit, measured and all that fun stuff. And they're like, okay, it's time for you to go. So we get up and I walk, like, two feet and then knock out. Just knockout. Luckily, there were a couple of people there to catch me, but I blacked out completely, kind of came to at some point and was like in a wheelchair. And, um, you know, they made it to the next spot or the place where I was going to like be for an extended stay. And I think within like four hours, I had to get up to try to use the restroom again or the first time they wanted, you know, me to try. And um, I knocked out again. That was a fun one. Luckily, I was I able to fall back. I, I was able to like fall back onto my bed. Um, but then I was pretty delusional for a little while after that because I was like asking questions like, Why am I? Where am I? Like, ugh, you know. So what was happening um, is that I had a fourth degree tear. So lovely. And I have a friend who had a fifth degree, so I absolutely know it can get worse. Well, the fourth degree was really not pleasant. Let me tell you. There was a lot of pain for a while. Um, and um, truthfully, like other than that, I would say it was like a super smooth, I didn't feel a lot of things like it, but it was really just that recovery that was, that was kind of painful. But because I had the fourth degree tear and, you know, I was bleeding before I began laboring and, um, all, or sorry, all throughout labor. And then she's like having to piece me back, whatever. Um, I lost so much blood like so much blood. And um, I, they had to, you know, give me some extra iron multiple times. It was a thing. And it's o it was okay, right? I, obviously, it was okay. Let me tell you, it is going to be okay. It is something to endure for a period of time. A C-section is something to endure for a period of time. Uh, and you end up with a scar. Um, with my first, I ultimately end up with a scar that Eric struggled to see, like, ever again. And <laughs> um, so, yes, the fourth degree tear, like, you felt it. It's painful. It's hard to recover from. But now, being so far out since that labor, uh, since that delivery, um, there's currently no real side effects. As in, there are no side effects that I've been able to notice um, that my husband has noticed, like it's, it's been fine. Um, and I'm going to be honest, this is just even like visually, like it's all okay. Like everything heals up and especially that area heals like a champ. Like we were made woman. That part of us is beautiful woman. And God like made it like fighting grounds or something. Like it like knows how to take care of business, how to heal up. It's amazing. Like God made us so amazing. Um, so <laughs> is everyone agreeing that unless you wanted to hear really, really, really personal and intimate details about, um, any woman, me in particular at this moment, you shouldn't have watched this because <laughs> I'm okay. I was just, like I said, I'm dishing. Labor and delivery is a weird thing. And it's so funny to talk about because that's all like, what? Like, are you serious? But it's kind of, fun now that I just think about, man, like you got me through all of that, Lord. Like you just, we just rolled with the punches and my memory is almost pure joy. That's what I remember through the whole thing. There was unexplainable joy that my girl was coming, especially because I was able to successfully have a V back. That, that's that's so amazing and I'm so thankful because one of the things that I prayed a lot for was that I had a big plan I was very very intentional about my plans and I prayed and I asked God that he would help free me of those plans that they would be helpful beneficial plans like me prepping and being a responsible human being and a good mom and 
Like I wanted to do all those things, but that I would release them to him, knowing that if anything else strange happened, anything unexpected, if my plans didn't work out, that I could live in this freedom knowing that he was in control and that I could trust him. And that's what happened. It was beautiful. I absolutely loved it. So I hope you really enjoyed or like benefited from hearing this like recap. And um, yeah, I hope you'll follow the channel. There's so much cool stuff coming. Um, I've got a nursing meditation, which so incredibly helpful. I hope it is just as helpful to many who have found the labor and delivery meditation very helpful. Um, so you can expect that to come. And then there's a whole bunch of other new stuff coming as well. And I hope you'll follow along. Thanks for loyally sticking in there with me. Um, I know it's been a while, but I'm really excited to be released right now in this season of life to join you again. It's going to be like so rich. Okay. We'll see you later. Bye.